Hey friends, my name is Daniel and welcome back to The Way Kids. Now next Sunday is a really special day. It's Easter Sunday and we're gonna learn all about what happened to Jesus and why we celebrate. Now Easter is the most beautiful, important time of the year because of what Jesus did for us. But today, we're gonna hear a story from the Bible about when Jesus had a meal with his disciples. Now the disciples were just the guys that hung out with Jesus and wanted to be like him. And at this meal, Jesus introduces something called communion. They had bread and wine together, and it was an extra special time. Now, Ben will tell us the whole story later and help us know what communion is all about. But for now, let's stand up together and sing with Jeremy and then with our friends, Aaron and Svea. All right, guys, Jared's gonna teach us a new song today. I'm super excited, I hope you are too. It's, I'm really excited just to do another one of these songs with you. Yeah, Because be last time was such a huge success. It was. So, this song, you have to start by marching. So if you're sitting down, it's impossible to march, you know. So if you can stand up, stand up, and we're gonna start marching. It's gonna go a little bit like this. Left, 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 right, left, 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 right, left. I said, let me see your funky chicken. What's that you say? I said, let me see your funky chicken. What's that you say? I said, let me see your funky chicken. What's that you say? I said, ma. One more time. Back in line. Left, 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 right, left, 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 right. I said, let me see your sizzling bacon. What's that you say? I said, let me see your sizzling bacon. What's that you say? I said, let me see your sizzling bacon. What's that you say? I said, One more time. Back in line. Left, 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 right, left, 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 right, left. I said, let me see your jumping dolphin. What's that you say? I said, let me see your jumping dolphin. What's that you say? I said, let me see your jumping dolphin. What's that you say? I said, <laughs> One more time! Back in line! Left, 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 right, left, 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 right, left. <sighs> Guys, you are amazing. Thank you so much for doing that awesome song. And we'll do it again one day. Alright, one, two, three, four. God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy, holy, the universe declares your majesty, you are holy, holy, Let's sing that again, God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are
Hello boys and girls, welcome back to At Home with Whitney. Welcome, welcome to my bathroom today. We are going to be learning the art of brushing your teeth. This is very important when we're at home before bed or when we get up or after we eat. When we brush our teeth, we need to do it right. How many times do you guys brush your teeth? Once a day, twice a day, three times a day. I myself brush my teeth three times a day, in the morning, after I eat dinner, and before I go to sleep. I just, this, these teeth don't just, don't just stay this white for nothing. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna show you, but first, you need to get into your comfiest clothes possible before you're brushing your teeth. Everybody knows that. I have got my comfy clothes on. I'm in my sweatsuit and I'm ready to brush my teeth. Are you guys ready to brush your teeth? Now, before we start, I want you to know that it's not good to just brush your teeth like and then be done. You need to do it for a few minutes at least to make sure those teeth are nice and clean. First thing we do is get our toothbrush wet. We're gonna go on the right hand side of the tap because I don't want warm water in my mouth when I brush my teeth. I don't know about you. Slick that right side cold water on and give it just a little rinse. Well listen boys and girls, you do not need a lot of toothpaste. Just a little bit goes a long way. Now I have my toothpaste on my wet brush, wet with cold water, not hot. And now I am about to rinse it one more time before I begin the art of brushing my teeth. Now cold water, again, here we go. Rinse, rinse, rinse. All right, so here I am, brushing my teeth. I'm not just doing what I'm saying. I just need you guys to know that it's very important to get every single tooth back here, up uh here. So when you brush, you want to make sure every tooth is covered. So I start with the back and work my way up. And now we want to go in circles as well as up and down to get a really good brush in there. Now, when you're feeling like you're done brushing, which is after about mm, two minutes, and you're gonna take a big bit, which I'm gonna do off camera, so I'm just gonna get this out really quick. Oh, I wasn't off camera. Oh no, I wasn't off camera. Sorry, I just see that. Now I just spit it out. Rinse that toothbrush again because I'm not gonna put it in. Um, my cup dirty again now, am I? Take it, put it back in here, and it's ready to use in the morning. Put my cup away, and now look at my nice teeth. They're nice and clean, and my breath is fresh and minty. I don't know whether you have bubble gum or mint toothpaste, but enjoy. I hope you had a great time learning about how to brush your teeth. I will see you next time. Thanks for coming to At Home with Whitney. This is Jesus. hey -o. Who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. At this time, the Jewish people were celebrating a festival called Passover that had been celebrated since the time of Moses when God brought his people out of Egypt. So Jesus was going to Jerusalem to celebrate. The disciples asked Jesus where he wanted to eat the Passover meal that night. Jesus said, as you go into the city, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Hello. Follow him. At the house he enters, say to the owner, uh, hi. The teacher asks, where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? 
He will take you upstairs to a large room that is already set up. That is where you should prepare our meal. The disciples found everything to be just as Jesus had said. Later that evening, Jesus arrived with the 12 disciples. They sat down to eat, and Jesus said that he was happy to be with everyone. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. He said, Take it, for this is my body, which is given for you. Jesus told them to do this to help remember him. Then he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. And he said to his disciples, This is my blood. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Jesus said, One of you eating with me here will betray me. He told them that things were supposed to happen this way, but that great sadness would await the one who betrays him. The disciples were very upset and asked, Am I the one? Who is he talking about? Judas asked Jesus, Am I the one? And Jesus said, You have said it. One of the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, who is it? Jesus said it was the one who he would give the bread to. He gave the bread to Judas, and Jesus said, Hurry and do what you're going to do. None of the others at the table knew what Jesus meant, so Judas left at once to betray Jesus. Then Jesus comforted and encouraged the disciples. He promised them that they would have a helper come when Jesus was gone. They all sang a song to God together. Hey, it's me, Ben. And today we're looking at this story of the Last Supper that Jesus had before he went to the cross and then a few days later came back to life. Well, this, especially what I want to look at today, is actually what we call communion. When Jesus took the bread and gave it out, and he took the cup and he gave it out, and he said, this is my body given for you, and this is my blood given for you for the forgiveness of sins. And so I want to look at what we call communion, the bread and the cup. The reason Jesus gave this to his disciples is because he wanted them to have a way of remembering what he'd done and remembering that he's always with them. Now, I don't know if you have anything in your life that you like, uh, maybe some keepsakes or things you've collected along the way to remind you of different experiences you've had. Do you have anything like that? Maybe it's something like a, a collectible, like a keychain. My friend John, he, he collects keychains. When he was younger, he would, when he would travel around, he would get keychains of everywhere he got to go. Or maybe uh, I know someone else uh, who collects uh, like seashells. Wherever they go, they find seashells and they collect them and they bring them home. And then they can they they remember. Oh, that's I got that one from whatever beach. They remember what beach. And then they go back in their minds and they remember the fun they had or the memories they made with their friends or their family. And so sometimes we have these collectibles, and it it reminds me of what Jesus is doing because when we attach. Uh, our memories to different things. It helps us remember and it even helps us have a similar feeling to what we felt when we experienced that, when we got that, like say it's a seashell or something like that. Uh, and so Jesus says, I'm going to give you something and I want you to always do this in remembrance of me. It's going to remind you of what I've done and it's going to remind you that I'm always with you. So I'm going to give you the bread and he takes the bread and he passes out and he says, this is my body. Well, what does he mean? Well. Did you know that Jesus, he was about to be arrested and they were going to beat him and they were going to hurt him and then they were eventually going to put him on the cross and nail him to the cross with their hands, which we're going to talk about especially next weekend when we have Easter. And so Jesus was put on the cross, they nailed his hands and his feet and that's also why he says, this is the cup. He gave him a cup of wine and we use grape juice now usually, but he gives them a cup of wine. He says, this is my blood for forgiveness because on the cross Jesus bled and it, but it wasn't just just for no reason it was for forgiveness because he loves us because he wanted to heal us of sin and shame and he wanted to defeat death and so that's why he did it and he said I want you to take this bread and take this cup and do this in remembrance of me so you'll always remember what I've done for you and you always remember that I'm never going to leave you 
And so now what's, what I think is really cool is, and it's similar to these collectible things in our lives that we collect little things, because we can go, whenever we get to take that together, we go back and we remember what Jesus has done for us. And we think about the feelings of gratitude and love that, he has, that we have for him because of his love for us, that he gave his life for us. And, and the, when we take bread and wine or grape juice as communion with the church family or your family, it's something that not only are we doing as our church, we're also doing it, Christians around the world are doing it, all over the world today. Christians in every country, in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, in the United States, in Canada, in all over. I don't know if there's any people doing it in Antarctica, because not very many people live in Antarctica. But in the Arctic, they're doing it. Christians all over the world are taking communion, the bread and the cup, and they're remembering what Jesus has done for all of us. And not only that, you guys, not only is it all of Christians all over the world, but it's also Christians all over the world through all of history. Since Jesus did this, his disciples have been teaching everyone else, this is what we do to remember who Jesus is and what he's done for us. He gave his life for us so that we could have a relationship with God, be healed of our sin and shame. And so this is like the best, it's better than a collectible, it's better than a keepsake. And that's one of the reasons I love taking communion because it reminds me of who he is, of what he's done, how much he loves us. And God loves you. And so when you take communion, if you take it with your family, I want you to remember that from now on. It's because of God's love for you that we're even doing this. Jesus told us, take the bread, take the cup, and do it in remembrance of me. Thanks for telling us about that, Ben. So for today, we have this coloring sheet that shows Jesus having the Last Supper with his disciples. Now you can print this off right on our website, and don't forget to send us a picture to us so we can see it. Email it to kids at thewaychurch.ca, and you can get your parents to help you out with that. Now Ben has been saying that if we want to know what God is like, we can look at Jesus. And today, Ben was teaching us about the Last Supper. This is when Jesus introduced communion. And communion is such a good reminder for us who follow Jesus. It reminds us of what Jesus did for us and that we can be forgiven for our sins. And do you know that if you want to be a part of God's family, all you need to do is talk to Jesus? You can pray even at your house right now. You can ask Jesus to be the king of your life, just like we talked about last Sunday, and to forgive you for your sins. He loves you so much. So why don't you chat with your family today about what Ben talked about? See if you want to pray together to ask Jesus to be the king of your life. And maybe you could even have communion together. Why don't we spend some time praying even right now? You can join me. Dear Jesus, I pray that you would be the king of my life and my heart. Would you forgive me for my sins? I trust you that you know the best for me, and that you made me, and that you love us. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Well, that's it for this week. Have a great week. You're awesome. I'm so glad you're with us today. Bye.